I don't know about you, but I love my belly button. It's an adorable reminder that I spent about nine months inside another human, leeching off their body until I was big and strong enough to get nutrients down my own mouth hole. You know, instead of the fleshy straw sticking out of my tummy. But while human belly buttons are pretty prominent, we're not the only animals to have them. And they've been around a lot longer than you think. In fact, the oldest one we've found belongs to a creature you might not associate with belly buttons at all. A dinosaur. Usually your belly button is your very first scar. It marks the place where your umbilical cord attached you to your parents' placenta. The placenta is an organ that only forms during pregnancy, and it has the very important job of keeping you alive without you needing to eat, drink, or breathe, at least until you leave the uterus. And after you're born, someone severs your connection to the placenta by cutting the umbilical cord and tying off whatever's left sticking out of your abdomen. Eventually, that leftover bit of cord dries up and falls off, leaving behind a belly button. But this is basically true for any species that grows a placenta, not just humans, although fewer medical professionals tend to be involved in those final steps. Placentas are made by most mammals, and if you've got a furry friend at home, you can see the remnants for yourself. In dogs, the belly button is just below the rib cage, in the middle of the belly. It looks like a tiny scar, a ridge in the skin, or a whirl of fur. And if you have a cat, it's in the same place. And you might even be able to feel raised ridges on your kitty's belly. But remember, when it comes to cats and belly rubs, please proceed with caution. As for smaller pets like rabbits, guinea pigs, and hamsters, they may be harder to find. But I promise you the belly button is definitely there. Here's the thing though, umbilical scars aren't unique to mammals, let alone mammals that grow placentas. For example, Viviparous sharks are sharks that give birth to live young. Their babies start out attached to a yolk sac, which, unlike a placenta, is a finite nutritional resource. And sometimes that resource runs out before the babies are ready to be born. In some species, this is solved with fratricide and cannibalism. But in others, like hammerheads or lemon sharks, the babies attach themselves to their mother's uterine wall using a quasi-umbilical cord until they're done cooking. The resulting belly button fades over time, but you can see one if you find a young enough shark. And this is also true of many animals that don't give birth to live young. Because if you're a fetus chilling inside an egg, you still gotta have some way to get nutrients into your body and get waste out. Yes, I'm suggesting suggesting birds and reptiles have belly buttons too. Just like mammals, birds and reptiles are amniotes, which means their embryos develop inside an amnion or a sac of fluid. And inside that amnion, a developing reptile or bird embryo is connected to a yolk sac through what's basically a hole in their abdominal wall. Just before hatching, the embryo slurps any remaining bit of yolk sac through that hole, which eventually closes up and leaves a scar behind. Scientists generally don't call it a belly button, though. They call it an umbilicus. And in many species, it vanishes over the course of days or weeks. But in others, like rock pigeons and alligators, it sticks around until adulthood. The umbilicus might be hidden by feathers or scales, and in some animals, the way those scales are arranged relative to one another can clue you into what's hiding underneath. That's even true of egg-laying amniotes that haven't walked the Earth in millions of years. That's right, I'm talking about the non-avian dinosaurs. Back in 2022, a paper published in BMC Biology reported evidence of a 130 million year old umbilicus preserved in the fossil of a dino named Cetacosaurus. Which sounds incredible, right? Well, this particular specimen bearing the rather unimportant sounding moniker SMFR4970 was way better preserved than most dinosaur fossils. It's so complete, scientists have been able to study its soft tissues, including its butthole. I'm sorry, it's cloaca. And we could even tell what color pattern its skin had. But that level of preservation isn't the only thing that's important when hunting for a fossilized belly button. It also helps that this animal was striking a very particular pose, giving researchers a great view of its abdomen. Still, we're talking about a long dead petrified dino. It's hard enough to find an umbilicus on modern dinosaurs, better known as birds. So how did the research team do it? Well, this sample is so unique and so important important to the fossil record that they want it to be as hands-off as possible. And what's more hands-off? 
than lasers. The imaging technique this team used goes by the name laser-stimulated fluorescence. Fluorescence is a kind of glow created by atoms after they get excited. Basically, one or more of their electrons has absorbed some extra energy that it doesn't want to hold on to forever. And to shed that energy, the electron emits light. As the name laser-stimulated fluorescence suggests, the research team excited the atoms on the surface of their dinosaur fossil by hitting them with a laser beam. By using a laser instead of a less directed light source, they could produce an image with finer detail. But the rest of this experimental setup was a bit less sci-fi. They captured all that fluorescence using a regular old DSLR camera, plus slapped a filter on the front to block some light they didn't want. And after a little bit of processing in Photoshop, they had their image of a dino's belly. Taking a closer look at the final product, they found a raised ridge right where the umbilicus would be. Now, that might not be enough evidence by itself, so they used a similar method to take images of umbilical scars in present-day birds and reptiles, too. Turns out, they look very similar to the scar on Cetacosaurus. So it's very likely we really are looking at a dino belly button here. And because this creature lived 130 million years ago, it's the oldest one we've ever seen. But that's not all. Since this particular Cetacosaurus specimen was almost an adult, it could mean that just like you and I, the whole species kept their belly buttons throughout their lives. While this doesn't mean that every adult dinosaur was rocking an umbilicus, it's fun to think about what different dinosaurs might do if they had one. I, for one, sure hope the T-Rex didn't have a belly button. Just imagine the agony they'd go through whenever it started itching and they couldn't scratch it with those tiny little arms. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow. If learning this fun fact has made your brain rewind back to being a six-year-old obsessed with dinosaurs, that six-year-old brain may want to learn more from our other channel, SciShow Kids. We've got plenty of fun episodes about dinosaurs, so you should get started by heading over to youtube.com slash scishowkids.